Dyson gives it a stretch, breaks through, straight down the spine. They're back in front for a two-goal margin. Tried to run through them, got a kick. Tyson bends it. Oh, they're in raptures here. Hawthorne's nine-win streak could almost be over. Here is the knockout blow. Best win of the season for Melbourne. 11th on the AFL line. Has just beaten the back-to-back to back premiers. Yeah, indeed, Melbourne absolutely flying at the moment, and one of the key reasons behind that success is their gun midfielder Jack Viney, and he joins us now. Jack, hello to you. Hello, how are you? Excellent. Three Good. wins on the trot after uh, knocking off uh, Hawthorne and then Port Adelaide, of course, on the weekend, and before that it was the Gold Coast. Why, why the turnaround? You're playing some really good footy at the moment. Yeah, I mean, we've just gone about our business. You know, the last month of football, we really wanted to, you know, finish off strong. You know, previous years we've we've tended to fade it out of the the home and away season, and you know, we really put a, um, you know, a real focus on finishing off the year strongly, and you know, that's just translated into to good performances. And finals, I know that there's a reluctance to maybe talk about it, but how do the players feel about it? Yeah, there's obviously, um, you know, a level of excitement. You know, just just being able to talk about it um, is, is pretty exciting um, stuff. But the club's fully aware that um, you know there's a lot of things out of our control and. Uh, we've simply got to take it week by week. As, as cliche as that sounds, um, that's the position we're in at the moment where we can't can't afford to um, slip up. So uh, we, we rely on a few things to go right, you know, our way as well. So we're, we're really just focusing on um, session by session and continuing that that goal we set, uh, you know, a couple of months ago to finish off the season strongly. Do you look back at the Essendon game at near the start of the year and just think, what if? Like, if you had one more win, finals is a lot more realistic. Yeah, you do. You do. You look at those, um, you know, at the end of every season you look back and there's always a couple where yep. you, you look back and you say, oh, you know, we're so close and if we won this one and that one, then we'd be in, you know, a, a bit of a different position. So, you know, I remember last year thinking the same thing. So, uh, you know, it, it is unfortunate you have, have those slip-ups, but I, I think, uh, you know, in my fourth year, looking back, you, you just have those, you know, those games every year where you, you should have got over the line. Do you think that with the surge you're on and the confidence that you're getting as a club, not just as a playing group, that this will have play a role in recruiting players? Like you're in for Michael Hibbard, for instance, that's, that's open. Do you think that will play a role in people wanting to play for Melbourne now? Yeah, hopefully. You know, the players really, you know, had some key signings um, towards the second half of this year and, um, you know, the players really believe and, and are excited about the direction the football club's going and, um, you know, fans and, and the... Uh, you know, the public is starting to see see the direction we're heading in, and uh, is, it is exciting. And, and hopefully, other players, um, you know, I guess, start to see us as a bit of a de- destination club and, and want to be part of what we're creating. And the Carlton game—that's one that talking to Ruzi the other day—that's the kind of game you've dropped in the past. Yeah, yeah, he's right. You know, previously in the last couple of years, the trend has been that we come, you know, come the end of the year where we're really struggling to perform and. You know, last year we played against Carlton, similar time um, and similar um, position. Carlton weren't going too great and we couldn't get the job done. Um, so there is, this is always a danger game um, coming up against Carlton and um, you know, really looking to, to play good football. The dominance of Maxi Gorn certainly helped uh, you getting a lot more of the ball this year. You've got a really good relationship with him, don't you? How do you build that relationship with an you know, old-style Ruckman and old-style Rover that, that you are? Yeah, well, Max is a you know awesome character, um, you know life for the the footy club, and he, he's got a lot of strong relationships with most players mm-hmm. at the football club. He's just that kind of bloke, and um, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of <laughs> opposites in a lot of a uh, lot of uh, aspects, but I guess that you know I, it means we're able to to gel. In light of that, do you spend much time off the field catching up with him? I know you say you, you're quite different characters, but you, on the field, you've got such a good relationship. Do you spend much time off it together? Uh, not a whole heap. We've probably got, you know, different... Uh, spend our downtime a bit differently to each other. <laughs> That's diplomatic. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So we, we, uh, we understand each other's differences and... Um, you know, that's just the one thing that, you know, why we've got such good chemistry, I think. Jesse Hogan didn't play against the Hawks when you had your best win of the season. Goalless against Port. Are you sort of... Are you weaning yourselves off that reliance that people thought you might have on him? Yeah, it's been. I guess you know, Hogs hasn't dominated games pre- um, in the in the the past few weeks. Um, you know, he's he's really playing a role for us at the moment, and 
um, you know, taking the best defender every week and, and trying to um, perform and, you know, hasn't, hasn't come up uh, with, with some goals, but the role he's playing within the team um, is enormous and is the reason other guys are getting off the chain. So. Um, yeah, he's, he's invaluable to our, our forward line and our team structure at the moment. Let's fast forward and say that you do somehow squeeze into finals. Obviously, things, a lot of things have to go right, but surely you wouldn't want to just make finals. You, you wouldn't want to just be there to, to make up the numbers. Well, absolutely. I mean, you, you get into September and you're striving to, to go as far as you can, as deep as you can in, in finals. So if you're ever put in that position, it'll be, you know, everyone will be given everything to, to get to that last day and... September, first week of October for, now? For October 1. <laughs> October 1, yeah. So, um, yeah, if, if we ever saw ourselves an opportunity, it would be going for the, you know, the real deal. Big dance. You're looking forward to Simon Goodwin taking over? I mean, he's... Or is he already doing a bit more right now? No, the, the roles um, stayed pretty similar throughout the whole year. You know, Ruzi, um, you know, Goody took over at the start of the year in the NAB Cup, but... Um, come round one in the home and away season, you know, Ruzi pretty much took full responsibility of his coaching um, role and it has stayed that way all, all through the season. Um, I am really looking forward to Goody taking over. He's had, you know, we've had two years to, um, you know, process the transition that's going to happen and um, Goody's been an enormous football club already and I can't wait to see what he's, um, you know, going to keep keep helping us develop in, in the future. Well, Jack, you've had a very good, uh, certainly a second half of the year. Uh, thank you very much for coming in. Certainly if I was a Melbourne supporter, I'd be pretty happy with the way things are tracking. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks for having me, guys.